Before we start the meeting today, we want to share with you a small video of why we are here today, just as a reminder for us to understand and move forward with a vision for tourism development and the people who make it happen every day. Service is not always about the smile. It's about a feeling, a vibe you create, a space of energy where others can feel blissfulness and tranquility, ultimate euphoria, yet ultimate peace, serenity. We have seen in the past two years some growth, some growth in arrivals, especially from some, some from primary markets, but as well some growth in room development. And what we expect, and I think James is going to talk to you, or Jim is going to be talking about that as well, what will happen in terms of stabilization of the market? Will we continue with that same trend? Talking about occupancy and ADR. We're already seeing in forecasting for the first quarter of 2020 that we will not be able to reach whatever ADR that we have seen in the past two years. This has to do with several factors, and if you look at it from the region perspective, and we will dive into it, but just to inside your brain and get your taste buds up to talk about what will really happen in 2020 in terms of hotel performance. This is a slide talking about how far or how different are we from the rest of the region in terms of occupancy, in terms of ADR, yes, we are still one of the lowest, AD, have one of the lowest ADRs in the region, but what are we doing to really crank it up? And what will 2020 mean, seeing now that we have more rooms, are we having demand? Do we have enough demand to supply the rooms? And how are we competing against each other amongst the properties? And this will also affect the overall ADR and press bar for 2020. And these are the conversations that we'll be having in the next uh, an hour and a half, and then Jim will take it over from the Caribbean region, and we will do a research as well from Curacao perspective and what we can expect. 
Mind you, rooms are coming into the Caribbean. We're not the only one building. This is a slide just for you to know how many rooms will be added in the next 16 months to 18 months in the, in the Caribbean region. Only looking at Dominican Republic, who has already the amount of rooms of Curacao it has in total, in terms of hotel rooms, only being added in the next few months. This will also hamper our supply, will also hamper our demand, and see how this will be facilitated. Things to talk about in the outlook for today will also be discussed. In general, as in Chata update at the beginning of the conference as well, um, the Chata board overview, as you may know, um, uh, we have elections coming up. We have a scheduled annual general meeting. The safety date will be set today. Um, the safety date uh, is for the March 27, 2020, so please mark your calendars to join us for the AGM um, uh, annual meeting uh, for 2020. In 2020, we will have four available seats for hotel members and one available seat for allied members. So for members as well wanting to participate in the board elections or existing board members who want to return as a board member, um, you will have the opportunity starting today in the next two weeks um, to sign up um, for your nomination deadline. Please make sure the nomination deadline is on March 2nd. That will allow us to have a week time to prepare um, the proxies but also the forms to make it official. And also the proxy deadline for voting um, uh, without being present is on March 25th. So please uh, keep in mind these uh, important dates. As a final update before we move forward as well with our keynote speaker for this morning, also, our team is complete again after uh, Vianney has left up by the end of 2019. We have now as well added uh, Gian Hamut as part of their communications team. So this is a uh, beautiful picture of uh, the team complete again at Chata and uh, where your uh, experts are available around the clock. Anything that you wish, you need, we're always here to support. But these are the new faces. Um, uh, that are uh, joining our team that you can also see uh, what we have done is really specifically identify their role in the association and what their um, part of the, the agenda is. But in any case, um, uh, we're ready to move forward with 2020. And with that said, I want to pass the word on to our keynote speaker for today, Minister Fiesel McWilliam. Safe destination. 
Therefore, I applaud the recent collaboration between my colleague, Mr. Quincy Gregori, Minister of Justice, and the private sector regarding the safety of our guests. I also want to recognize the work and effort of Politour in this regard. The issue of safety and security in tourism is very complicated. According to the famous <coughs> tourism expert, Dr. Peter Tello, there are several common components. I will just mention four. Visitor protection. Usually, the most attention goes to this component. <coughs> Protecting the guests from other persons, visitor, visitors, or criminals who may want to cause them harm. Second, protection of the staff. I think we all know that a business cannot survive without commitment to employees. Therefore, it's equally important to protect your staff and prevent them to work in a place from becoming hostile. Third, site protection. It is expected that the environment is both clean, attractive, but should not forget to protect our historical site against careless travelers. We have to work toward making the tourism industry sustainable for the future generation. Fourth, the reputation <coughs> protection. We all remember how 9-11 attacks affected the perception of safety <coughs> and it affects its international travel. We also remember the disappearance of the young American girl and its impact on the reputation of our neighbor island, Aruba. Ladies and gentlemen, one single incident can cause a damage to the hospitality industry, the property, and the brand of the destination. I want to mention the role of CTB Politour and other stakeholders in the aftercare of the incidents helping the tourists cope with the effects of the negative experience. Thank you very much. I realize that it's impossible to prevent all safety and security incidents. But, but if the private sector, the public sector work together, we can create a safe and welcoming destination for our Curacao. I come to you, but you guys can also come to me as a minister to keep this forward and make yourself to be a safe island for our guests and for our people. Thank you very much. I hope you have a very fruitful morning during this very interesting topic, safety and security. Thank you very much. On the next part, I'm going to invite uh, the minister to join me uh, in the chat uh, hot seat. This is yours. <laughs> and we want to discuss uh, today as well, even knowing that we have, uh, for, for example, in terms of safety and security as a team for our conference today, there are also other important factors that we believe are important for the growth of tourism development. And one of them is, for example, um, the realization of one of the goals of the industry, which is the Curacao Tourism Authority. And the question is, where are we today with the Curacao Tourism Authority? Where is Dino? We are, <laughs> yes, yes, um, we are pretty far, I must say, I was, uh, I think two weeks ago, um, I was uh, hand out this beautiful um, report from the, from the stakeholders, and I think it's a matter of uh, weeks that we can start with firm steps toward this new organization that will be very important to, uh, to be more efficient in this sector, but also the collaboration about, I've just had uh, in, my, <coughs> in my speech, about the private and the public sector. So I hope in uh, the coming months, we will be as far that we can realize it before summer. Looking right. forward, yeah. I think these, these are the, the three main important highlights of the CTA for the members also thinking about what is the CTA all about. It talks about the Curacao Tourism Authority, focusing on, for example, to have an independent structure, similar to other models in the region, for example, Aruba, 
um, where they have a public-private setup structure within the, um, uh, um, of the new authority that would be leading, especially for the marketing and airlift efforts uh, for the destination, as well a little bit of the product side. But also what's important is to have a collaboration between the the private sector, and the government, let's say, uh, the, the politics of the world, joined into one focus, moving forward into one direction and one vision, um, and to have as well an independent financial structure, which is also very important to make sure that the tax collected goes directly to um, this new authority, similar to the other models. Um, but this, it, again, it's on the agenda, and that's what we uh, believe is right and important. And uh, we hope as well that uh, within your uh, time frame that we can really make steps into implementing that for us. And definitely, um, we started in October last year, so we are pretty much on, on time. So I hope in a couple of weeks we can realize uh, make the steps to, to start changing uh, the, the changes that we have to change in the current structure so we can have all this what you just explained. And it's very important for me, of course, to be more efficient, but for me it's very important uh, the private and the sector being, the public sector to be on board on this very important industry in this structure. I agree. Um, another point I think that we discussed as well um, lengthy in the past uh, few months is talking about the level playing field. And how can we make sure that the stabilization in the market in terms of supply, talking about the room growth, how can we make sure that this new authority can be rightfully funded, and do we have the enough funds to, to protect this side? And that's where I think uh, in the past two years, um, I chatted with the government commission, and um, the whole level playing field process, together with the mayor and finance and CDP, to talk about how do we really get those taxes in, in this case, for the ones who don't know, the original alphabet and I'm hoping that all rooms being rented out in Curacao has to pay. Where are we doing that? Are, is it also part of the agenda with the government in terms of um, this is important and this is where we need to collect the taxes? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have already um, have some amendments in our uh, procurement hospital ordering um, just to take care of the ones who um, I usually take the part of our tourism but they don't pay for it. Also to be there and put also the money where they, they get all the profits from. And I think this will be the key for us to realize that enough funding and fair for everybody in this industry um, to be part of this beautiful growing industry. But important is for the government to have the laws in place. And we, it's already ready, it's done actually, but it's now at the release act, which has to have a review, the, um, the legal, legal review, exactly. And you know that sometimes it takes more time than we wish, but you can be, be, be sure that our department, Mayo, and my wonderful team is working on it. And we did it with this just a couple of uh, weeks of maybe two, three months. Thank you. I think that's, those are the two important points uh, <coughs> the shadow board as well, moving forward for 2020. Um, uh, the term of the, the board is uh, coming up uh, by the end of March. So these two goals are the real pressure points that we're focusing on the CTA, the realization as well of the level playing field, at least to make some steps into making this happen. Um, I think another important subject that I want to also talk to you and today, Minister, is talking about employment, how to get more local talent within the industry. And so we have recently collaborated on the great project Plan for Turismo, which we'll be elaborating more today as well about. But what are your views about it and how do we have enough talent locally? Are we going to talk about being open for the importation of talents, what I call it? What, what are your views about it? Yes, I, I sort of think we have a, a lot of talents, but the problem is the last decades we didn't put too much focus on it, especially at schools. And if you see perhaps at the high school, um, the PSBO, uh, you can choose uh, upward or the, uh, the, the hospitality sector, um, uh, you can choose the uh, accounting sector, you can choose technical sector, um, you can choose healthcare sector, and what you see that there was no interest from our um, um, uh, our kids to choose the hospitality sector because we never did any effort to, to let them know how, how beautiful it is to work in this industry. There was nothing um, out there to tell them, you know, if you go in this sector, um, you, be make, you can be sure that you can get a job. There was no information for them. So we could not expect them, those talents, our talents, to choose um, this sector. But 
going back, I really think we have talents. We have much more talents that we that we realize, but we need to invest in the ones that got already out of the school system. But it's very important for us right now um, at the high school, even um, at the elementary school, to start to promote tourism and make the the, the next generation realize that promote that work in hospitality is beautiful work and it can be done <coughs> on levels. We now have time for a few questions from the audience, from our members, partners in the industry. Are there any questions? Now is your time with the minister sitting right in front of you. Um, uh, are there any questions for the government or vision or what are the next steps? I'm a gesture. <laughs> Good morning. So Good morning. I, have, I have a question about uh, the security that's going on on the island. Uh, we have a lot of uh, small crime on the island, I call it small crime. Uh, one of the things is on the dive center. I do some shore diving and I'm located at the peninsula of Caracas Bay. If you look at a few years ago, we had all the different dive sites on that spot. We had a security standing there that was looking at the dive sites and the amount of small crime was going downwards. Nowadays, uh, they changed it and like on Rector's Bay and Fort Baker, one of the most popular spots where a lot of two tourists come over here. Not only divers, but a lot of tourists have parked the car over here. Um, we have a we daily help in them to get into the police because of the cars are broken in and those kind of things. Um, the securities that were standing at Fort Baker are moved to the Caracas Bay area. They have a lot of traffic going on with normal people, so the amount of small crime on that part is really low. But if you look back to the, the parts more back in the island where we have no controls, it's getting really in an amount that you say that tourists are not liking it. And if you hear people talking about it, um, I think it's, a, it's a very bad for our, for our <coughs> economy and especially our tourist spot. At Tapo, they put up a sign that if you leave valuables in your car, they will be broken in and they will be gone. And people are laughing about it, but we see that the crime on that part is going down. Is it maybe an idea of that putting all those nice signs that we have on, um, on a crackers diet like Tushi Turismo and Yukosaurus, a bushy person, that you can put, instead of putting those signs, you put there that leave no valuables in your car and make sure that you take everything out because you make people aware of the fact what's happening. Yeah, certainly, yeah. it would be very nice, but I understood that there has been also some, some folders um, for the tourists for to hand them out through the hotels and car rentals. And yesterday I could understand that these folders are not really hand out to the tourists. And that's, that's a big uh, um, omission because you have that information up front and we don't give them that information up front. But I think, yes, it would be a very good idea to, to have these signs in those hotspots, but it's also our responsibility, the one who works in this beautiful um, industry, to be uh, open with our guests, to be open to them and tell them up front what are the risks, where you have to be, how you have to, to, when you don't have to leave your stuff, if you have never leave your stuff in the car, when you have to be driving around certain areas. When I go in our islands, when I get to the hotels, they tell me, Miss McQuillian, um, between um, 6 and, two, um, and 6 and 6 p.m. to um, 6 a.m., don't drive through the city, they tell me. So why are we afraid to say that? Just be open to our uh, guests, and of course, all these um, IDs are welcome, and it's all about matter to to try to to have the everybody in the same direction to realize this because it doesn't cost a lot, but it takes a lot of a bad experience for our people and also for us because every guest that get a bad experience, I I think for me it hurts, it hurts, so it will be hurting you guys too. So I think it's a very good um, idea, but I encourage the people working in this industry to be open with our guests. Don't sell them uh, an island without crime. Don't do that, because that's, that will really work at the end. I think just as a note as well, and last week we had a meeting with the Minister of Justice and the Minister of McWilliam, talking about the areas that need more attention, and the Director's Bay area on the back of Director's Bay is on the list, together with the Bandabo area, and the, there are some plans currently being worked out on actions 
to be taken on those specific areas and Venice Mercury was very open to make sure that if these are the problem areas, let's focus on these areas and do it. So in the next uh, few weeks, I would say that we will give an update to membership as well yeah. um, on what, what would happen there. We have room for one more question, maybe on the right side. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's easy. Yeah, we have one question here. Okay, good morning. So my name is Alejandra. I work in Roy Resource, part of the Paporki Brown, so CFR in area. This is more actually uh, a comment, it's not a question. Um, uh, with all due respect, I'm not in agreement with the signs about, you know, like this place you should do not have your things in the car or things like that. Um, is uh, a comment I got from one of my guests the other day was the, he was very pleased to see the police going back and forth in the street and uh, we improved the lighting outside. So I think those uh, details actually are highly important for this topic that we should work a little bit behind the scenes. I think uh, another thing that is very important is also for us that we are in the sector itself to train our staff to read our people. If we are reading a guest that we know is uh, maybe putting themselves in a, in a dangerous spot, then we can train our people how to guide the guests, but not by like uh, making this, uh, uh, the island is free of criminality, I totally understand that, but also not getting to the street to put signs everywhere and make them so aware that something is going on, because it's our responsibility to make sure that our guests are going to safe places or the highlights of the island that are, as just Miles just uh, said, um, that we are taking care of those highly, you know, like important spots to be safe. So I that's agree. just my uh, comment. Yes, I, I agree. I respect your, your idea on design, of course, um, but I rather take care of them to be more aware, not to have them get into those incidents. Let me put it in balance. And of course, there is a big responsibility um, from the government and also from the private sector because we have to do this together, as I said, um, especially in the hot spot. But it's very key for the ones who have the direct con contact with our guests to make them well, train them well, train them well to, to give the right information and for them to be upfront prepared for what they're gonna encounter on this beautiful um, island which we call Tushi Korsal. But as I said, we have to be transparent, we have to be real to them, don't hide to them. I think that's my, my, my um, takeaway message uh, for the industry because we this is the reality of Kyrgyzstan. And not only Kyrgyzstan, that we that we real it's, it's it's all about the Caribbean. We have maybe some islands have it more than other, but we have a problem also in Kyrgyzstan regarding crime to the tourists. So we just have to be open, upfront, inform them, and I think that's what we, the best thing that we can do for them at the moment they visit our island. Thank you, uh, Minister. If you have anything else to add, then we'll... Uh, no, I just wanted to tell um, the beautiful um, members of Chatham this morning that I'm very proud to be uh, Minister of economic development and tourism. Um, it's a beautiful sector. As you guys know, I have been telling um, all these months, being a minister, that for me the most important um, economic pillar is tourism um, right now, and it will be um, upcoming years. And so we have to take care of it, not only you guys, but also we as government and our people. But that's important for us to work together in collaboration um, encourage our people to work in this beautiful um, sector where they can realize they can have also a future for them and their generation. So all I can say, take care of my physical show and I will do my part. Chata update in the next couple of minutes. The Chata update talks about several things that we're currently working on and where we're moving forward. Um, as we know, in the first quarter of each year, we do a membership survey to understand what are the priorities from our members, what are the things that they find 
are important and where do we really need to focus on. One of them is on the business performance of 2019. Overall, the majority of the members stated that it was overall a positive year. Um, the tourism aspect of our economy has been uh, rated as strong, and employment also went up in businesses, and even though the capital spending, profits, and pricing stayed the same or went down, still a lot of members investing in, into getting more employment and more staff to work within the industry. And also they reported an increase with more than 10% in terms of um, 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 profits and sales and revenue throughout 2019. In terms of hotel performance specifically, which was a question really directed to our hotel members, 33% indicated to have seen some increase in occupancy and 67% saw an increase in ADR, which is of course as well what we saw in our final numbers. The overall performance of 2019 saw, saw a slight decrease in occupancy, however, ADR and REF bar went up for some, and the results of our survey clearly reflects the same experience amongst our members, but also in the overall destination report. Members are overall optimistic about 2020, this as well, a, a clear statement was received by the survey from our members, optimistic in the sense of that 60% anticipate some increase in hotel occupancy, as well as an increase in ADR, which will automatically translate into the red bar. Again, these are the questions that were done in by December up to January of this year. Um, and this is basically the sentiment and the input received by our members for 2020. But things change every day, and this is a survey as well that we did, we will do again by the mid of 2020 to make sure that if we're, if we're on the still the right track, if the sentiment remains the same. The overall tourism outlook for 2020, rooms and areas of improvement, which is the first one, 70% said crime and safety needs to be improved. Hence as well today our topic on the membership meeting talking about safety and security, area of development, air service development, 50%. Majority of members say that because we see more room supply coming in, early service development is even more critical today as it was two years ago. And the political unrest, as we know, we have elections coming up in the next nine months, if not that mistaken. This as well uh, will have an impact on what will happen in terms of the situation. We all know that within the political campaign period, everything has a standstill on island. And what will that mean for investment? new things coming in and how, do we, how are we going to cope with that. And as well, you have the critical situation within the U.S. with the elections coming up as well. What will happen for the U.S. traveler? Um, and Jim and will also be talking about that, of how will the Americans feel to travel yes or no in 2020. But in conclusion, 88% um, do have a positive outlook and 53% anticipate a higher or bigger uh, performance compared to last year. In terms of advocacy, um, uh, on the association side, which are the areas that we're currently still working on? The Curacao Tourism Authority, which was just explained as well during our uh, session with the minister, is a top priority for the agenda from Chata, and this is something that we're pushing with the government and the political parties on a daily basis. Level playing field, um, the, the, the current um, board of Chata is also we're evaluating um, uh, some other actions that we also have to take. We cannot simply tell and wait. We also have to realize that it's important that we really um, uh, implement the playing field concept in Curacao, similar to other destinations such as Amsterdam, New York, who already made progress moving forward. Again, it's on the agenda, and in the next uh, three weeks, we'll be updating as well um, uh, the membership on what are our steps from our side, the private sector side, in realization of the level playing field. The taxi meter pilot project, um, uh, taxis is still an issue on island in terms of issue, not only because they, they, they charge higher, but in general the whole impression of the taxi to Curacao and how easy it is to get access to that transportation in general. So um, uh, together with Mayo as well, we're currently working on the execution of a pilot project. We are very happy that Mayo also has this on the agenda in terms of implementation, the actual taxi meters for 2020. And we do not talk about taxi meters as before where you have this small gadget in front that tells you, oh, $5 or $6. We're talking about new application, new ways, um, and we don't want to mention names because otherwise the um, taxis will scream again, but new ways of application of how to make use of your proximity, to highlight what's happening, to understand the rating, but also be able to rate the taxis moving forward. Um, we have a, a few properties who joined as well the taxi pilot project, which are listed below, and we have about 80 taxi drivers, which will, in the span of, I think, a month and a half, 
will conduct, two to three weeks, sorry, will conduct the testing of three separate applications for us to test, and based on the best usage from both the Texas side and also from the side of the hotel partners, where the guests also have to get their input, we will then decide together with government which um, a taxi um, a, a meter application would be the best. Another important project that we're also discussing this week with government is about bus transportation. Talking about transportation in the industry, one of the things that we have seen again and again, and especially this year with the Clapham Turismo project, is the limitation and the connectivity among the tourism areas, the hotel partners, with where the people live to actually get to work. Especially for Clapham Turismo, we have had about eight to 10 people dropping out because they cannot come in to be at work by 7 a.m. in the morning, for example, in Santa Barbara, or for example, in Papagayo area. Even though that they're living in Montana, you would say it's close by, but they still have to come to downtown Tukunda and then to catch a bus to go back. So um, we have a visit this week with um, the government and also with, um, let's say, Diario Nacional, with all stakeholders, including Bus Chiqui, the small buses, and Bus Grandi, ABC Bus Bedrijf. Um, it is on the agenda from the government side, um, and uh, we are um, preparing the business case from our side with a research done um, amongst all the people traveling by bus to work to make sure that they understand how important and how what the access is. And we hope that for this year there will be some changes in terms of how the public transportation is arranged. Phones on silent, please. So. Um, another part of the agenda is a tax reform, and we all know that by April 2020, the government is planning to implement certain amendments and moving, for example, to the ABB. And we also recently understood of a concept called ABB Plus, and this might also have an impact on the tourism for positive business and how profitable the, the, the let's say, economic development in Curacao is. Um, and for us, it's important to be uh, at the table, to be important to be as well on behalf of the industry, making sure that any changes in terms of legislation for the taxes moving to RV does not hamper growth for the tourism industry. And what we have seen now is because of the deficit of, for, for example, Hiroma, or the deficit of a loan from the central bank, we have to now adjust our rating again in terms of taxes and the, the, the rate of taxes and the amount of percentage of RV or RV plus. This, again, is beneficial for the growth in the tourism industry. Um, so we are working in the, in the next 14 days, this week as well, we already started, into analyzing the proposed changes by government and making sure that our feedback is also sent in on behalf of membership for the tax reform as for April 1st, 2020. Safety and security will be discussed lengthy um, uh, today as well. And we had a meeting last week with Minister of Justice and the Mayo. Um, but that's also on the agenda in terms of advocacy on behalf of Chata uh, for the association. <coughs> An update on the project Clapa Turismo and education, as you may know, as we shared last year, one of the priorities of Chata is education, and again, education in its broadest sense. And we're going to give you an update today on what are the things that we have realized in the past eight months. Um, we currently have for the project specifically Clapa Turismo, um, we have about 26 students focusing on kitchen assistants who started this week at the properties. Service assistants, we have 12. Housekeeping students, we have 15. And local teachers working with the program, currently we are seven, and we expect to um, increase that in a couple of uh, months as well, based on the participation and more people uh, coming in into the program. Um, currently, in the last four weeks, we have been busy. These are the, pro the, the groups that already started with theory, and we already had a one month theory and are currently working. And currently, we're working on the new jump start with new groups focusing on kitchen assistance and also um, safety and security guards. That's what we call hospitality security and also service assistance. This is the list of partners where the, um, the students, as they call them students, are currently working. And uh, it's great to see you we'll share with you today as well some stories of these youngsters hoping to work in the tourism industry. Since last year, we had a registration day of about 400 people attended the first day. And in the last uh, month, we had, and we had as well two re registration day, dates for the Clapa Turismo Pro project. This was in combination with Mayo and SOA, where we did one session in Potravanda in ICUC, where we got about 150 people who signed up interested to work within the tourism industry. And as well, on February 15th last, we had a session in Barber in Palabao to recruit new talent to join in the industry. 
Remember, the priorities from ours in the industry is two things. You only need motivation and the passion for the industry. Without any experience and without educational paper, you are welcome to join, as long as you have the right mindset and attitude. So the screening process also um, takes longer than usually. It's a three-path um, train, where at the end of the day, the hotels, the partners, the restaurants, the businesses, have the final say in terms of who do we hire, yes or no, for the duration of the program. So we need to interview over a thousand people to be able to reach the 200 people that we want. So that's a constant process that we're really focusing on, but it is hard to get talents and to, to what the minister also recruited to is, because it isn't part of our DNA yet in terms of youngsters working in the tourism industry, it is still so hard to really recruit on a daily basis of that it's work in the industry, but we will continue to move forward and we have some stories to share on some people who really decide to work in the tourism industry and please enjoy. <laughs> Eu vou me encher da 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 mar, mas eu tô com pena, a tô de nada, e porra em bom em muito qual é, tô em nada mais, mas os amigos vão não continuar porque nem o informal, tanto não tem qual é tem um pa a. Eu tô dando uma experiência, o que é o meu, o que é o meu dinheiro, tanto o mês da hora de fogo, só só pago da bom manhã, o mês da é amarra na louco do pelo. Eu sei que não é tão bem do governo. Eu vou ler então por ele, então o pessoal do Brasil de dia, sempre, a hora que nós tínhamos, assim que usa de dia, não tarda, não tem que responder, vim de lá e me mostrar que está lendo com o botim, passou, e sabe que também é uma oportunidade, da mesma maneira de ver. Eu me disse, nós mesmos, vou preparar para ele, eu estava, eu estava me dizendo. Agora eu vou tomar essa palavra, o reto, o que não é de Espanha, não é muito esperto. Ami, kerana si kultisma, ini adalah kulturisme. Kerana sebab kita sangat berterima kasih kepada Omni Italia untuk mengundang saya untuk berdiskusi dengan anda pada show pada hari di Kuchina. Kami mesti berekspresikan kepada parti kuliner yang di Eropah dan Hati. Dan tujuh kita boleh mengenal sebab itu kaso. Ia adalah unik. Kami ini orang yang dengan grup dari ini mungkin kita dengan pergi untuk berdiskusi pada hari di Eropah sistem di Kuchina. Anda boleh faham ini dan bisa. Lá que nós estamos a subir dentro, para mim, nós estamos a uma luz para mirar em drive, para mirar em coxina, para mirar em mês, para mirar em iniciativa, para ser a grande parte de teoria, para mirar em prática, ou um cena, para todos os anos, para ser o projeto de trabalho isso possível. É só que nós estamos a determinação em drive, para mirar em mais dinâmico do país, por favor. Esse aqui é um projeto de chata, Ministério do Desenvolvimento Econômico e Ministério do Desenvolvimento Social, Labor e Bienestar, que forma parte da estratégia de crescimento para a pessoa. Renzi is one of the talents who started working this Monday at Santa Barbara. So uh, if you want to see him in action, make sure to pass by an office place in Santa Barbara. And he's working, he's going to be one of his future vision is to become a chef with his own restaurant in Curacao. Again, starting small and making sure that the opportunity comes for growth. Next up, we want to share with you our service assistant as well, also one of the amazing students within the program. My name is Tadayanara Catalina, I have 40 years old, and the last time I studied with my house, I was very happy to be here, and my assignment is the administrative media work. And I admire the social media, clap for tourism, when I offer a good job, and I have an opportunity excellent to be able to create the tourism and the service. Eu tenho esse challenge que estava dando muito esse serviço. Me pôde ser esse aí para sobrar na costa. Nós temos um sistema de muito esse serviço. Quando nós também somos um sistema correto. Mas agora vou visitar e aí eu partilho. Quando está com ele inteiramente outro posto com o turismo, falta outro posto mais para o porque daí aqui para ele crescer pelo mais grande. Eu tenho mais uma estrutura com esse outro posto de novo e me pôde ser um colega também que me deu interesse para mim para o turismo para crescer. Agora aqui, eu vou começar com as taxas e trabalhar na leve do mundo só. Eu vou falar com o meu esposo, com o meu amor, com o meu serviço, para ele, por isso, de coração, e agradecer e dizer mais e mais cada dia de tudo a esse negócio. Me sou eu estar crescendo, ter trabalho com ele, vai lá assim, e sim, eu mais posso virar um supervisor, manager, e por isso, sim, eu posso tratar de tudo o que há, mas sim, eu vou continuar a me amar. 
Domi e con una persona con ciò in clave turismo, con una clave turismo che non ha un'opportunità eccellente, pagò di SPH o ha un certificato internazionale o ha un servizio che sta contando un servizio una persona. A me da Diana e Catalina, che è una clave turismo. Eu também vou pedir para mim, minha ser motivação para a minha santa de paixão também de última semana a ver Vitor e Paz para mim, para ele entrar para o turismo. Para mim também vou pedir também para ele entrar para o Correio da Grande Sala e vou pedir para ele entrar para o Correio da Comédia para o Correio da Comédia, 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 para o Correio de ser seguro de que se porta preparado de frente ao hotel na para poder ter para tomar na tarde o serviço de na possível também praticar e ganhar uma experiência em tudo a área da cultura e mais por aí. Esse aqui é um projeto de chat Ministério do Desenvolvimento Econômico, Ministério do Desenvolvimento Social, Labor e Bem-Estar, que de forma parte de estratégias de desenvolvimento a pessoa. In the next few weeks, uh, you will see, be seeing more and more of these tenants uh, spread around our hotel properties and restaurants. We're very excited about the project, and this is talking about investment in our people, making sure that our new generation, but also our old generation, a 40-year-old lady with ambitions to become a manager in the service industry. And this is exactly what we stand for in terms of when we talk about the slogan, investing in our people. And that's a commitment for 2020. So, Clapa Turismo, the next steps will include as well, the Baby CEO agreement. Recently, we have signed an agreement with Baby CEO, which means that all Baby CEO schools in Curacao will also include tourism within their educational platforms, but within a practical way. Where we're not only focusing on books, we're really getting them out of the classes from whatever, even if they chose for administrati, getting them out and making sure that they see what the tourism industry is all about and hopefully as well to inspire them for future um, projects in the tourism industry. We have recently done a tour with several new projects coming down and this is what the agreement is with the Baby Seal School where our members again, our transportation companies, our hotels are giving their service, their contribution and making sure the students get the opportunity to experience the industry. Another agreement that was signed talking about education, which is SVA, which gives us the opportunity to make use of the theory and the examination material of SVA, which is a already re recognized theory for the tourism industry, re recognized in Europe, especially in Holland, where all embryo school schools in Holland need to adapt to the new SVA and policy with their end, for end qualification. This means that all participants within the Club Turismo project once they have their certificate within six months, they will also have a certificate that is recognized internationally that they can continue to work in if they want to go to level two or three within the regular education or in other positions. Another important project that we're also working with us is the Sustainability Task Force. We have Valet as well, and we have the board, which is the chairman of the Sustainability Task Force. Um, we're working currently on a sustainability effort survey um, uh, with our members to understand where we are today and what are the currently efforts being done. Raising awareness on sustainability in Curacao in general, but also in terms of investment pro projects coming up, but also to guide our members and encourage them to participate within the minimum standards of ABM and make sure that we are slowly but make, making steps in making a sustainable development and focusing on recycling as well as a topic for 2020. And that will be the facilitation process within the task force and thanks for the partners who are involved. Room development uh, for Livingstone for by December of 2020 as well with the additional rooms are scheduled to, uh, to be ready. We have as well Papagayo still on the list with a new resort being built, not named Papagayo but in general in the Antil area um, to be uh, built. We also have the start of construction in 2020 by the fourth quarter of the Road Santa Marta project. And currently, you already see several developments there taking place. But the fourth quarter 2020 is for the first phase of the hotel, which talks about 250 rooms, if I'm not mistaken, right there, Robin? Um, Autograph collection, also a uh, view of the design scheduled to start construction by the third quarter of 2020. And recently there was in the news about what they already started, no, it was just a tour and I think that it mixed up with something else. But in any case, the construction actually will start in the uh, third quarter of 2020 and it will be part of the autograph collection hotels in Pietermain. 
The courtyard Marriott um, soft opening standard for 2021. The construction has already um, recently um, started, so in the next few months you will see um, some things um, moving up in the area of um, <coughs> right here next to the Renaissance. Beyond City Hotel opening uh, this week. Um, this property is opening on the 20th. This week, by Friday, <laughs> I forgot the date, but in any case, um, uh, um, they are fully booked for the first uh, few weeks, um, so they're very happy as well with their new addition um, to the uh, Curacao, and the Otrabando Hotel is currently being renovated, also open in the third quarter of 2020. So again, room development and the grand opening by April 1st, with the first phase of Quedani with about 200 rooms, scheduled still on time with the first phase of the hotel, um, uh, scheduled for April 1st, 2020. So again, room development and opportunities uh, coming in into the sector, but we will try to update as well the membership on a quarterly basis on where the projects are and what to expect moving forward. Stay to date for Flavors of Curacao 2020, September 26th. Um, Renaissance just confirmed as well to be the host of the, the fifth edition of Flavors of Curacao. So thanks to Renaissance as well for hosting us this year. And if you are here and if you have any opportunities to want to <coughs> be part of the Flavors experience, either at the restaurant or as a sponsor, please contact uh, Selena within our team. Um, again, Flavors of Curacao is for educational efforts. It's a fundraising event where we invest all um, money and proceeds back into educational efforts for the industry. Um, we have a Riders Festival coming up, as well part of the educational um, uh, um, uh, um, component of Chata, where we team up with, um, uh, basically, uh, for the Riders Festival of Curacao, where the team this year will be tourism, and Curacao in general, and how, how does tourism make you feel in Curacao, where we're going to scout several young talents who are good in writing, to come up with stories and ideas of what tourism means for them, and for the winner, there, there will be a book, the signing deal with a famous uh, author in Holland that will be coming up with a book on tourism development of Curacao with um, the writers, with the youngsters who want to participate. So be on the lookout for that as well. We also want to announce today a great collaboration with um, the team from Tuna and the Frisk magazine. And um, Kimberly, you're here in that as well. Um, uh, we have a new concept for the In Room magazine starting in 2021. Um, Curacao now, and I think Curacao now already speaks about what will happen in terms of the, the changes in the in the room design or the in the room magazine. Curacao now talks about the concept that we're going to move and skip from the annual hard cover and move into a biannual soft cover magazine where we can really portray what's really happening currently in Curacao to be more effective in communication with our tourists in the rooms as well. As well. Currently, we give you one book by January and the same content needs to last for 12 months. What we're changing now, we're going to start with a biannual, so every six months. Moving forward, we even talk about doing it every quarter, that every quarter is a fresh content in the room for the readers of, in, in, of the hotel, but as well highlighting what's currently happening and what you can really experience for example, in the carnival time frame, or for example, in the summer time frame at Seita. So this gives us more flexibility, and this is a new concept that will be introduced by December of 2020. So as of today, um, we will be announcing as well our new partnership, and uh, they will be contacting the members and partners as well to be part of the magazine. Of course, this is as well a revenue source for Chata to guarantee uh, the, the investment in all efforts that we do. The Curacao Now experience is they're not trying to sell a generic dream. What we also spoke about is to really make it as real as possible, as authentic, and really focusing on what Curacao really is. And that will be as well part of the experience of the new Curacao Now magazine coming up by the end of the year. Curacao Peter and Team, they have a sponsorship opportunity for 2020 team. We will continue to remind you, and uh, today and tomorrow we'll be sending out some emails on the partnership for Curacao Peter and Team. If you wish to invest in these youngsters or them to participate in the competitions, please uh, reach out to us. Any donation from 100 guilders to 50,000 guilders is welcome. <laughs> and of course, more. Uh, but in any case, that's a uh, Chata update for this morning, but <coughs> what we're currently focusing on for Q1. And then, of course, in Q2, we'll come back with an update as well. But enough about Chata, and I think let's move forward with our next speaker, which is Mr. Jim from Aruba. And uh, I want to introduce uh, Jim uh, with the following uh, a few words, is that Jim used to be the CEO of the Curacao Tourism Board in Curacao. He then transferred to the Trinidad Tourism Board and then to St. Lucia. And then for the past 10 years, uh, he has been in Aruba with Ahata as the president and CEO. 
And the third thing he said, he's doing, doing something fun, which is data and tourism analytics. And uh, today uh, he's going to share with us what the data for the Caribbean looks like and what can we expect for 2020 and beyond. Welcome, Jim. Good morning, everybody. I know we're a little bit behind time, so I'm going to roar through this. Miles gave me 15 minutes, so I'm trying to keep it to 15 minutes. So what I want to talk about today is the Caribbean overall, its overall performance. Um, then talking about the outbound markets, what's been happening at the outbound market what's been happening in some of the key destinations, the characteristics of what's been happening there. Some uh, <coughs> conclusions, a forecast, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. So quickly, the United Nations keeps track of world tourism statistics, and they've estimated that in 2019, overall tourism was up just about 4%, from about 1.4 billion to 1.46 billion trips. And they estimated that trips to the Caribbean were up by about 5%. But this is very much an estimate, and I'll come back to that in a minute, from about 25 and a half to 27 million trips. So you can see, oh no, sorry, um, that's supposed to be a blue line. Okay. Where, it says, where it says global, this is going to be horrible. Um, uh, anyway, be that as it may, what it means is that the Caribbean has been growing at about the same pace as global tourism, about 4% per annum. But what's been happening is that the rest of the world has been growing a little bit faster, and the Caribbean's share of tourism has shrunk since 2009, from about 2.2% to about 1.8%. That means that tourists are saying that they prefer other destinations to the Caribbean. Now quickly, what I do is I collect data from <coughs> all of the tourist boards in the region, from the central banks, from the departments of statistics. And these are current, mostly through the end of December. There's a couple that are not quite up to date. But you can see that the actual numbers suggest that tourism to the Caribbean only grew by about 3% in 2019. Curacao, as Mark mentioned, is up 7%. And you can see one of the primary reasons for that slower growth is what's been happening in the Dominican Republic and Cuba. Dominicans saw a 2% drop in total arrivals, but Cuba saw a 9% drop. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Airseats, while there was about a 4% increase in traffic, there was a 6% increase in airseat into the region. And you can see that was basically because of a 10% increase in airseats from the United States. Both the UK and Germany saw a decline in airseats, and all of that had to do with Air Berlin and Thomas Cook. Uh, their challenges in the summer. A big jump in traffic from Russia, a big increase in seats from Russia. But what's been happening, and Miles mentioned this earlier, is that there's a continued expansion in rural inventory. And so what happened last year, and these are the numbers from SDR, average occupancy in the Caribbean fell from 65 to just below 64%. ADR was up by about 5%, but occupancy was down demand was not growing as fast as supply. And again, as Miles mentioned, you can see there's a big variation in average ADR, average daily rate across the region. The highest is in the Cayman Islands, it's about $460 ADR in 2019, and the lowest is the Dominican Republic, which is below 140, Cruz is at about 160. And you can see there's a lot of variation. The concern has to be that the Dominican Republic is very cheap and getting cheaper. Now the cruise industry was up about 5% last year, total from 28.5 million trips to 30 million. But the number of trips to the Caribbean on the cruise trips only grew by about 4%. And these are some of the key figures. I should mention at this point, you're all gonna get a copy of this presentation today. Selena's promised that it's gonna be sent out to you all, so you don't have to worry about remembering every single one. You can see, Overall, is about a 4% increase in cruise visits to Caribbean ports. Curaçao is about 7% increase in cruise visitors. One of the challenges in the region at the moment is the Western Caribbean itinerary. Uh, the Cayman Islands is, you can't decide whether or not it wants to develop its own port. They're having some issues there. And Jamaica's cruise visits were down 16%. Now, data about key outbound markets. 
Obviously, the biggest market for the region is the United States. And the United States government keeps track of its travel by citizens overseas. And through October, which is the most current numbers, you can see that that number was up 8% in 2019 compared to the same 10 months of 2018. The Caribbean number was up 9%. Europe continues to show good growth out of the United States, is up 7%, and that's the biggest share. But you can see, oh, this one works, good. <laughs> the red line is 2019. You can see there was a good growth in US travel overseas in the first seven months of the year, and then that really slowed down in the second half. And you can see, basically, that in fact, September and October, there were fewer trips made by US citizens overseas than in 2018. As again, this just reinforces the fact that it's really good growth in the first half and not so much in the second. What's been happening though overall is that the Americans are beginning to refer to some other destinations and the share of travel by Americans to the region has fallen by 9.8% to 9.3% since 2016, which has to be a concern. Now in terms of US traffic to destinations within the region, overall to the Caribbean, US traffic was up about 8%. But you can see that two destinations, Cuba, American travel to, uh, to Cuba, was down 22%. And that was because of a decision by the American government earlier in the year to really tighten the screws on travel to, to Cuba after uh, the uh, Obama administration had loosened them. And the Dominicans saw a 6% drop in American visitors. And I'll come back to that again in a minute. Hawaii saw a very 8% increase. People were switching from the Caribbean to Hawaii. In terms of Canadian traffic to the Caribbean, it was really basically flat. There was no change in Canadian traffic, but there was a big jump in traffic by Canadians to Mexico. It was up about 7%. The Canadians basically are beginning to prefer Mexico. In terms of Germans, business outbound, overall, no real change, about a 1% growth. But you can see that to the Caribbean, it was down 16%. Big drop in traffic to Cuba, to the Dominican Republic, and to Jamaica. A big jump in German traffic to Turkey. Last year, it was up 11%, by more than half a million visitors from Germany went to Turkey. UK, UK we know we have issues with Thomas Cook and some other issues. <coughs> a 9% drop in travel to the Caribbean. <coughs> Again, Dominican and Cuba suffered, uh, and again, a big jump in traffic to Turkey from the United Kingdom, up 14%. The drop in traffic to Spain, which Spain was one of the biggest markets for, for UK travel. In terms of the Netherlands, as an outbound market, again, flat overall, just over 5 million trips by uh, residents of the Netherlands. But you can see to the Caribbean, it was up about 10%, and it was up. 9.5% to Curacao, so you kept pace with the region. But again, big increase in Dutch traffic to Turkey, up 10%. In terms of South America, Argentina was down 20%. And the reason being primarily is that the Argentinian peso was devalued by about 37% against the US dollar, making it more expensive for Argentinians to travel. Caribbean was down 17, overall it was down 20. Brazil, trips were down about 3% overall, but down 15% to the Caribbean, uh, basically because of this use with the Dominican Republic. Now in terms of destinations, we're getting at a lot of perspective, inbound to destinations. The big one is what's been happening in the Dominican Republic, and I was very happy when the minister was talking about the impact of perception of safety and security. All this has happened as a result of negative articles that appeared in May and June of last year, particularly in the North American press, which spilled over into, into Europe. And you can see that from June onwards, business to the Dominican Republic overall really collapsed. And you can see in terms of percentages, in the first half of the year, traffic to the Dominican was growing. And then from July onwards, anywhere from 10%, 10% 5% later on, decline in overall traffic. And it was down not just from the United States, it was down from all markets. It was down from, the US was down about 6%, but Brazil, Argentina, Germany, and the UK were all down as well. Interestingly, one of the key markets that did grow was the Netherlands. It was up about 25%. Uh, 
And the real problem is Punta Cana. Punta Cana has about 50,000 hotel rooms, and it's the dominant portion of the Dominican product. The Dominican overall has about 80,000 hotel rooms. So when Punta Cana catches you know, a cold, the Dominican Republic as a whole really, really is almost dead, to be honest. 10% decline in traffic, but you can see it was all in the second half. 14% overall, but anywhere from 40 to 50% decline in business to Punta Cana in the second half of the year. And all of that had to do with a negative perception of the destination. And the question has to be, to what degree are they addressing that? And if you look at these numbers, the answer is not particularly clear. Consequently, average room occupancy in the Dominican Republic fell by about six percentage points, which is quite a big number. Uh, in 2019, which is the red column, ADR was down as they began to cut prices to try and maintain market share. So you can see RevPAR was down 11%. So Cuba, also a big destination, it has close to 70,000 hotel rooms. Their traffic collapsed from May onwards. They were hoping to get 5 million visitors, they ended up at 4.3. Again, they saw declines from just about every single market not just the United States, Germany was down, France was down, the UK was down, Italy was down, Russia. They saw some growth in that traffic, but that's not a particularly lucrative market. Cancun, which is a big competitor for the Caribbean, their business really didn't change in 2019. These are international air arrivals to the airport, 0.1%, no change. But the challenge with Cancun is they keep on adding rooms. And so what happened was occupancy fell. Average room occupancy in, in, in Cancun fell to 68% from 71%, and ADR fell 10%. Again, they began to discount in an effort to maintain share. The Bahamas, we know, they, as a result of the hurricane in September, they were doing quite well through uh, July. Then the hurricane came along in September, and you can see the red line basically below 2018. The Bahamas has three basic destinations. They have Nassau, Paradise Island, I'm sure a number of you have been there. The new resort, Bahama, opened, and it resulted in an 18% increase in arrivals. Grand Bahama took the brunt of Hurricane Dorian. Their business is down 27%, a huge drop. Uh, the outer islands where Abaco was, they were doing quite well, and they ended up at the end just plus, plus 5%. Now the United States Virgin Islands, they suffered, you can see from the orange line, which is 2017, you can see what happened as a result of the hurricane. <coughs> Their business was doing very well in 2017 and then fell off a cliff in September. Began to recover in 2018, which is the blue line. And you can see 2019 was something of a recovery over 2018, but that has slowed recently. And, and that's, a, that's a concern because they're going to be out there looking to try and continue to rebuild. <coughs> And Puerto Rico, again recovering from the 2017 hurricanes, 30% uh, growth in air arrivals, but they've been adding rooms, room stock back in faster than demand has been growing, and their occupancy dropped uh, from about 69% down to below 66. Uh, their ADR is up, however, because they've added new room stock, higher quality. Curacao, you're familiar with, Miles touched on it, and I know Paul will be speaking to it in a moment. Had a good first half and then began to slow in the second half because of airlift issues and some, some hotel issues, and I'm sure that Paul will explain that. The big growth for Curacao last year was about 17,000 more visitors from the Netherlands, incremental visitors from the Netherlands. Increasing visitors out of Colombia, Venezuela uh, obviously continues to have its challenges. And the US, we know about the situation with the American Airlines and, and also some of the time. Aruba um, continues to, to grow, particularly out of the United States. They're basically focused on the US market, and so far they've had some issues about producing their numbers, but through October of last year, they, they saw a 13% increase in US business. It's now in excess of 70% of their arrivals come from the United States. And Venezuela continues to, to, to decline. So, quickly, I know it's a lot of numbers, and in, in terms of what's been happening in the region, obviously the Dominican Republic and Cuba, the declines in traffic there have had a huge impact in, in terms of the overall numbers. But the important thing to remember is neither of those were a result of natural causes. This wasn't a hurricane or an earthquake or something like this. 
This was in the case of the Dominican Republic, negative perception of the destination. And then the type of the situation with Cuba was a policy decision made by a foreign government. Uh, and those two have had enormous impacts, and I think they're going to have a significant challenge at addressing those issues and getting back to where they were born to be. Puerto Rico, St. Martin, and the USVI are still recovering from hurricanes in 2017, but they're beginning to see a slower increase in business. Cancun had its issues with crime and sargassum. They're already gearing up to see how they're going to deal with sargassum this coming summer. And what is happening is that the US are looking to some other markets besides the Caribbean. Uh, if you just get a constant blitz of negative publicity, whether it's um, hurricanes, whether it's crime, whether it's whatever the issue, then they're beginning to look to Europe, they're beginning to look elsewhere. Latin markets, obviously, have got their own issues. Venezuela, nobody knows how that's going to play out. Argentina, I think, we haven't had the write-off for a while. And as a result of that, Caribbean countries are beginning to see, well, the Caribbean region is beginning to see its share decline, which is a concern. But at the same time, as Miles mentioned, and as uh, other <coughs> sources have indicated, the industry keeps adding rules. Cancun has 30,000 rooms on the books for construction. The Dominican, at least 5,000, could be 10,000. Cuba wants to add about 10 to 15,000 rooms. So, very quickly, forecast for 2020. Uh, as we all know, it's a presidential election year in the United States. And we also have the Summer Olympics in, in Japan. And that traditionally, from a tourism perspective, has put a damper on growth out of the it also makes it extremely expensive to market in the US because the cost of advertising goes up because all the political candidates are buying available inventory. But the good news is the US economy appears to be strong. The consumer confidence is good. European economy is less so. Um, I was in the UK over Christmas and everyone's just sort of shaking their head about Brexit. Nobody knows how that's going to play out. But the German economy is not as strong as it could be in uh, some of the other economies also. And then, as Miles mentioned, we've got coronavirus, and, and nobody knows how that's going to play out. But it's clearly going to have a significant impact on the cruise industry, more so in China and, a, and, a, and in the Asian area, but it, should, it could play a, um, <coughs> have an impact in the Caribbean, but also on stopovers, I'll touch on that in a minute. On the supply side, continued expansion in inventory. Dominican, as I say, is adding in excess of 5,000 rooms. The Rubers still are starting construction on a number of properties. They're not necessarily going to come on stream in 2020, but they're certainly going to be coming on stream within the next couple of years. I think the Dominican and Cuba are going to continue to suffer during <coughs> this year. One of the challenges that the Dominican has is they lost a lot of group business as a result of these cancellations. So they're trying to replace group business with transient business, which is kind of difficult. And clearly on the other side of things, and I'm sure you all saw that the latest announcement is that the 737 MAX, its reintroduction has now been pushed back to September. So nobody knows when that's going to, to play out. But a number of airlines are reliant upon that plane, and that's going to be an issue in terms of limiting the amount of available airlines. So in terms of expectations, the US will continue to be the market leader and should grow another 5 to 8 percent. But it's going to be a very competitive market because everyone's going to be looking to the US to get the business that they're losing from elsewhere. Uh, the sense is that Canada will show modest growth. European markets will continue to look for value. And, and business in the Caribbean will probably be <coughs> in 2019. There's no reason to see that it's going to grow substantially. Latin markets will continue to be volatile. But one of the new uh, wild cards, if you like, is what's happening in Southeast Asia. Uh, with respect to Chinese business. I don't know if you know, but uh, last year, Thailand received 11 million Chinese visitors. On January the 27th, the Chinese government basically prohibited overseas group business by the Chinese. And so these destinations, um, the number one destination for the Maldives is China. The number five destination for Dubai is China. But if that business shrinks, they're going to be looking elsewhere. So that's my lightning gallop through my numbers. Uh, thank you all for staying awake. And if you had any questions, <laughs> I'd be happy to answer.